This one-of-a-kind Robin Hood clock is perhaps the greatest 19th century clock ever made. Standing at over 11 feet tall and 5 feet wide, this colossal clock case is a masterpiece of English oak hand wood carving. The style and high level of craftsmanship suggested is the work of the great Gerard Robinson of Newcastle, perhaps the most famous of all British wood carvers. The legendary story of Robin Hood is depicted throughout the clock as the beloved characters come to life in high relief. The beautiful and kind Maid Marian holds arrows while protecting a vulnerable woodland animal. And probably the most famous of Robin Hood's merry men, Friar Tuck, is seen here in his jovial state. Robin Hood stands front and center next to the king's deer, in which he won a bet that he could not shoot the animal with his bow and arrow. Looking behind Robin Hood, four hand-painted weights are revealed works of art themselves and massive in size with the largest weighing 102 pounds. The movement is also unique and absolutely monumental in size containing a complicated four train movement that places it among the most complex tall case clocks ever created. This perfect timekeeper containing a 12 figure dial with secondary calendar and moon and sun phases. It contains a carillon of 20 bells, and at the hour, these bells play one of seven songs, one on each of the seven days of the week, adding to this clock's importance and rarity. Amazing craftsmanship marked by a painstaking attention to historical detail are honored traits of this master craftsman, and those qualities are on full display in this stunning piece. When Daniel Defoe's fictional novel, Robinson Crusoe, was first published, we can only imagine that not only did he wish for it to be successful, but to endure the test of time. 141 years later, a young cabinet maker by the name of Gerard Robinson would immortalize his tale in another form, the Robinson Crusoe sideboard. At the tender age of 14, Gerard Robinson was apprenticed to Thomas Hall Tweedy, who was considered the finest furniture maker of the day. It was only a few years later that Tweedy chose four of Robinson's works to be displayed at the International Exhibition of 1862 in London. And it was at this exhibition that the Robinson Crusoe sideboard gained its recognition. It was the hit of the show. The magnificent and intricate relief carving depicting the trials and tribulations of Caruso's shipwreck on the island garnered the attention of everyone at the exhibition. First showing the shipwreck, his gathering of supplies, his frustration and loneliness, on to his meeting of his man Friday, and finally to the calendar that he carved on a post came ashore here September 1659. The entire tale of Caruso's 28 years on the island are depicted on this magnificent carving. John Millard and I used to be like a manager in the Discovery Museum and Lang Art Gallery and the Shipyard Gallery in Gateshead. I'm standing in front of a big carving in the Lang Art Gallery that's by Gerard Robinson, a Newcastle carver from the middle of the last century. He was born in about 1834 and when he was 14 was apprenticed to a wood carver called Thomas Tweedy who produced a load of woodcarvers in Newcastle in the second half of the 19th century, including Gerard Robinson, including Ralph Headley, the artist, and Elijah Copeland, who's like a radical undercarver. But Gerard Robinson was 
the master of them all. He was the foreman of the workshop when he finished his apprenticeship and produced in a new style. He invented a style of sideboard, which sounds a bit weird. But what it means is he actually plunked pictures in carved wood onto bits of furniture. So it was like a high Victorian mad furniture. In the 1850s, carving was amazingly popular in Newcastle. There were a number of carvers set up and artists came along a bit later, painters in the 1880s, 1890s, all struggling to make a living on Tyneside. Now some of them, like Gerard Robinson, tried out in London to because they hoped they would make more money there. But Robinson only stayed in London for a couple of years and then returned to Tyneside. But one of the carvings that Robinson made at Tweedy's workshop was the five related carvings, the story of Tam O'Shanter from Robert Burns' poem, starting off in a pub where he's having a drink and ending up with him being chased by witches and all the hounds of hell across a bridge. And that was done, produced by Robinson and then copied several times by apprentices. It was one of the things they had to do was to copy Robinson's original, including Ralph Headley and his Gerald Robinson's son, Henry H.T. Robinson. The Tweedy workshop was right in the middle of town. It was in Granger Street on the Central Exchange building and there was a long window there that people would look through and see the sculptures being done and some of them presented as they're finished. What we're looking at here is King Alfred on a boar hunt. The figure in the middle there is King Alfred and there's a boar down here just being attacked by some dogs, and the dogs are running ahead of the horsemen and have the ball. So it isn't carved out of one piece, it's several pieces of wood which are then fitted together. And you can see how that works in the foreground there, where you can see blocks of wood that have been carved. And that gives you the opportunity to carve the background in some detail. Some of the figures behind these figures, for example, are carved in detail, which you can only do by disassembling it and then remaking it. About 1885, Gerard Robinson moved to Pine Street and as his business was going downhill, he died there in 1891 and his son took over the business, but it was past. He was still trying to do the same sort of carving as his father was doing and there wasn't a 